Good evening. Welcome to this episode of Prophecy for the Last Hour. Preparing for a paradigm shift, that is my tagline. And uh, again, I have meat prepared for the dinner hour, so I hope, thank you for tuning in, and uh, I hope you uh, find this interesting and get something out of it. So praise God. Uh, oh, praise God, Yeshua is on the throne, and uh, we don't have to worry or be anxious about anything, but in all things by prayer and supplication. We can just make our requests known. And I'm praying for a linear. I'm hoping to present my information linearly. So we'll see how I do. Now, I want to jump off here because, um, in my opinion, I think I'm going to call this teaching, A Perfect Storm is Brewing. Uh, and that's really true on a lot of levels because, uh, not to make light of it, I do believe that we are in a time time of the end and that things are going to change on a dime. That's why I say paradigm shift. So this is, uh, but there's another little storm brewing that I think could have great ramifications for the elect because my audience, I believe I am sharing insights that I have to the elect. Okay, so and I make, I say that unapologetically. People who are deeply committed to the scriptures, to the Torah, trying to, trying to truly get wisdom and understanding, which is the principal thing. Now, uh, one of the things that this last couple weeks that I've been really kind of amazed at, or that it's kind of really, you know, when you study God's word, one of the things is level, it's, it's a ladder. It's Jacob's ladder. It's you climb, you go from an understanding to an understanding. God builds precept upon precept. He doesn't expect you as a kindergartner to understand all the, you know, the really deep stuff. He builds, you know, you, you track with him. He builds it precept by precept. But one of the things is, and this is what I'm big on, is the level of esoteric, knowledge that is part of our tradition, the Judeo-Christian tradition, okay? And how much of it has been stripped from us. That's what, you know, there's a lot of the by Our fields have been stripped. I mean, they're bare. The locusts have been, there's so little true esoteric understanding left in the church today that when you try to talk to a lot of people, they're like, what planet are you from? Okay, so, but I want to make my case. But the other side, because I've always said this, there are two sides to this coin, and there is the esoteric knowledge that our sages, the rabbis, the priests, the prophets, the true tracking remnant of God have always had and kept close and kept in the house of Judah, and kept, I believe, protected, disseminating generational to generational to a very small elect again, which I believe fun basically funneled into the, the Essenes, Nazarenes at the time of Yeshua, and it is out of that group that he was called, that he was called out of, okay, as John the Baptist was, and these key players. Now, so to make my point, because, all right, so I listen to a lot. I'm a YouTuber. That's what this show is all about. I do it. I take it. I put it on YouTube, and I have a, 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 a group of followers, and we're kind of all tracking similarly with a lot of revelations out there, and there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot of people out there in cyber world doing this also. But sometimes, you know, things get a little controversial, even amongst ourselves, and we don't always agree all the time, at the same time, about different things, and there are some really large concepts that are out there that are being flushed out. One of them is the whole flat earth. It's got a name. It's called the flat earth. And, and actually, I do personally believe that that name is a little bit of a misleading nomer because people always think flat. And it's not really... <laughs> Okay, a geocentric world, it would, to me, would be a better way to put it, versus the heliocentric world. And then you got to Google what's the difference between heliocentric and geocentric. I'm all about educate yourself. Be part of the dialogue. Know what everybody's talking about. Anyways, uh, you have two schools of thought going on right now because this is kind of front and center in people's minds examining the data. 
you have some people that are very vocal, no, 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 it can't happen. You've got a lot of naysayers, but you have a lot of educated uh, people who, who know a lot of stuff, who, who are researchers and have a lot of information and are tracking very closely to the, the knowledge that's being increased in the world today, which refers to spiritual knowledge, which is my one little rabbit trap to say this, because sometimes this is what I mean. It's like a, it's like a knowledge dump. I mean, it's like every day. It's like you can hardly keep track anymore. You can hardly keep up to speed <laughs> with some of the information and things that are happening. It is definitely accelerating. Now, I think that's also a little ploy of Hasatan to just sort of keep you so off balance. It's so hard to keep up with it. But be that as it may, it doesn't matter. This concept of the esoteric knowledge and this concept of how uh, the flat earthers, in my opinion, which I am a geocentric flat earther in the sense that, yes, I do believe that we are, <laughs> scripturally, the apple of God's eye. Now, I would interpret that according to my understanding of how words are used, especially in their deeper level meanings. The apple, apple is a code word for soul, okay? Garden. Uh, it, well, okay, let's just stick with fruit. Uh, the apple is a fruit. And fruits represent souls, okay? Believe it or not. We are, uh, we are the apple we of, of his eye, okay? His eye, Yahweh's eye. Okay, let's see if I can do this. Unpack this in a deeper level. Jesus came to save souls. Yeshua came to save souls. He's not saving our sorry little butt, our little body, okay? Those are going down to dust, and we will get new resurrected bodies. He is saving our soul. Okay, and unfortunately in the modern world, people have no interest and don't really even have an, a foundational understanding according to um, the soul. Anyways, he's coming to save our soul. When he looks at us, he sees our souls, and that's what's really important to him, okay? That's what he sees, and when he sees from the high heavens, he's not seeing in a physical, I mean, he because he can read, you know when you read a barcode? <laughs> I'm already at my tension. Yeah, you're scanning the outside of the box on the barcode, but it's giving you all the information on the inside. He doesn't even, he can even do deeper. He can really see everything. That's why nothing is hidden from Yah's eyes. That's why every thought, every word, and every deed is going to be called into account because he can just see it all, all three levels, and I'm going to get to that, okay? So it is geocentric. We are... The, the, the Adamic man that God is saving in the earth today that is becoming part of the new Jerusalem that um, the new, in the new, is, is the apple of his eye, okay? But in the cosmology of the thing, how does it all work out? I don't think we're there yet because when a revelation first gets released, it really does get released. A lot of times, it's like everything else, you got to start at the bottom. You got to get the baby food. The, and you got to drink the milk, yada, yada, until you can handle the strong meat. Okay, God does never break, never breaks typology. Even Isaiah, even these guys were once little kids. They once had to learn everything, precept by precept, okay? They didn't just come out of the box understanding everything, or out of the womb, understanding everything that they did when they were, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 120 years, or whatever it was, okay? Now, this, I, last week I was talking about this concept about, um, because I think there's a perfect storm, because I think the Satan, the house divided, can't stand. I think he's trying to get us into two camps again. He's trying to divide us again, and he's going he's gonna to try to discredit both at the same time. And I, I, I just, whatever, we'll see how successful he is in that. This is from uh, 2 Ezra 14, which I did uh, read last week, because this is my question. And if you have some good information for me and you're on my YouTube, send me something. I'm, I'm, I listen to a lot of people. But he says, um, Ezra, because, you know, and this is knowledge is lost and found. All the books, holy books were burnt. When Jerusalem was sacked in the, in, at the second temple time, I mean, they just burned and leveled and destroyed everything. All the records, the genealogies. I mean, we just have no concept how devastating and what a blow it was in so many levels. But anyways, Ezra asked the Lord to restore the knowledge. 
the, the understanding, the, the whole storyline, because they didn't have any, they didn't have it in a written form. They had oral, they had some people that still had an oral understanding. So this, the whole story of Ezra is how it, did, it, it came to be. But he said, when you have finished your work of recording, God just gave him back the understandings, you will make some of it public and you will give the rest to some wise people. And I hope I have time to flush out what a wise person is and we'll keep it secret. Okay? Esoteric knowledge. During the 40, during the 40 days that this whole process was happening with Ezra, as, as the Ruach HaKodesh was filling him again with wisdom and knowledge from the high heavens. This is, this is God's point of view. This is not some man just writing down what he thinks. This is literally... God restoring through the Ruach, the true, the truth, okay? The true history and everything. Truth. 94 books were written. At the end, um, at the end, God said, now you were to make public the first 24 books. These, and, and he said, so that everyone, whether they are worthy or unworthy, may read them. That's called exoteric knowledge. Anybody can read it. Get whatever you want out of it. But the last 70 books that you wrote are to be held back and to be given only to those who are wise among your people. Because these books contain a flood of understanding, a fountain of wisdom, and a river of knowledge. Now I went through that. Those are very Kabbalistic terms. And this is talking about the highest, the mind of God, wisdom and Hokma, and, uh, or, or wisdom and Bina. Hokma and Bina, wisdom and knowledge. Okay, but my question is, where is these 70 books? <laughs> you know, you who people who subscribe to a 66 canon book, well, my Bible says there's 94 of them. 24 is basically the Old Testament. And even in a King James has 66. Where are these books? Where is this information? Okay, this is the point. Where is the esoteric hidden knowledge and wisdom of God, okay? And so that's part of what, now if you don't think that it's there, let me give you this, I've been really studying a lot, the, the Clementine homilies. People, you gotta read these things, oh my gosh. Okay, so we got so many of these letters from Paul and the whole Pauline epistles and everybody thinks that the whole New Testament is revolving around Paul, which is a bit of a misnomer, okay? This is the whole point. As many Jews came into the faith and were practicing toward practicing completed completed Jews as they were Gentiles, okay? And these people, Clement of Alexandria, okay, so I'm not gonna get into the whole two house thing. Peter was a completed Jew. I mean, that's what you would call him today. He believed in the Messiah, he was practicing Torah, he was a completed Jew, okay? But here in the Clementine homilies, uh, there's a little phrase here, uh, which the, the, the recognitions of Clementine, the Clementine homilies, there's a whole bunch of literature in here. And uh, one of them reflected here in chapter four, okay? Prudence in dealing with opponents is the title. But in, in this is what you gotta get into because there's some good stuff in here. Simon Magnus, who is he? Was Paul, how does he fit into this thing? It's so much information. Put the puzzle pieces back together. Anyways, he is talking about someone who has, um, in his life, is showing fruit of the Spirit. Is sober, merciful, upright, gentle, humane. Does, you know, no one doubts these good qualities. Okay. If this person, so, and so his life, which is in other respects worthy of approval, okay, stand approving for God, uh, should be amended in those points in which it will appear to be imperfect. Okay. But if he remains wrapped up and polluted in those sins that are manifestly such. Now that's a whole thing. I'm not going to go into that. This is the point. It does not become me to speak to him at all of the more secret and set apart things of divine knowledge, but rather to protest and confront him that he sees from sin and cleanse his actions from vice. Okay. This point of he will speak to me of secret and set apart things. This again, this is exactly what Ezra is talking about. The, the wisdom that goes to the wise, the, the, the hidden, the esoteric understanding. This is what was going on in the early church. There was a sort of a transfer as 
this, these pe- wise people who had this understanding, a lot of these scenes, were coming into this, this new paradigm. It was a paradigm shift. We're coming into the new thing. Messiah ben Joseph had come, okay? And they brought with them their esoteric knowledge, okay? Which was not d- disseminated to everyone again. It is always disseminated to the wise, okay? Now, this is just something we got to believe because it's in the text. I'm not making this up. All right. Now I'm going to read to you from, because what I'm saying is this is what we have to recover. If we're ever going to put back Humpty Dumpty all the way back together again and flush out a lot of these big cosmological questions, flat earth and all these things, uh, there's a lot of information I believe that we still do not have, that a lot of people we do not have on their radar. Okay. Now, uh, and this is my premise, this is my supposition, I guess it is my premise, because I have, I, I believe this with all my heart, I believe that God has confirmed it to me, that the, the, the Kabbalah, <laughs> Jewish mystical understandings, the oral Torah, the Kabbalah, is what got, where 90% of these 70 books, the knowledge and the understanding and the wisdom are, okay? They are not out... A lot of it has sort of seeped through to other groups that have parts of it and spew off parts of it. But by and large, I believe that Judah kept the esoteric knowledge that is for the last days. Because if you read Enoch, that's the whole point. This knowledge, this is what Daniel says, is reserved for the last days generation, which is us. So this is for us. This is our inheritance. God will give it back to us. You better be, like um, Clement would say, you better be a Torah observant, (laughs) completed. Uh, part of all Israel, or you don't, you, you don't even worthy. Uh, let me put it this way, because there are two sides of the same coin. Without holiness, no one can please the Lord. Okay, and I'm not going to go into that whole discussion. But here is um in in in, and this is what is called uh, the mystery level. This is what I keep saying over and over. Okay, but this is in First Corinthians two. 6 to 16. So if you think Paul isn't talking like this, I want you to, to, to challenge you, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses, I'm going to go through 6 through 16. Because see, okay, among the mature, okay, so first of all, the mature. We are talking about a group of people, I'm going to say this, the wise, people who are mature. You know, mature people can control their passions. Part of being considered mature, like your kid when he gets adult and he becomes mature, someone who can handle responsibility, who can control his passions, who is not hot one day and cold the next. Okay, so this is part of the concept. You have to be able to walk the walk. You can't just talk the talk, okay? So those are the mature. They're the meat eaters, okay? (laughs) That's another way of saying it. However, so among the mature, we speak a message of wisdom. Now, I will tell you right now, wisdom is this understanding, okay? This is wisdom and understanding. Wisdom is a code. Wisdom is, the, but we is the wisdom, the highest level understanding, the hidden mysteries of God, the set apart divine knowledge, and the secret things of God. Okay. Now he says, however, we speak a message of wisdom, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, which are coming to nothing. In other words, you know, look, I'm not receiving this from fallen angels. I'm not receiving this from men. I am receiving this from, this is the hidden wisdom that the esoteric understanding that God has reserved for the last days. Okay. No, we speak of mysterious and hidden wisdom of God. So he's saying, no, this is not the wisdom of the age or of the rulers of the age. This isn't from the fallen angels. This isn't any of this stuff. This is, we're speaking of mysterious and hidden wisdom of God, which he destined for our glory before time began. Now, who's Paul talking to? Our glory. These are the called out. After Messiah ben Joseph came, he did a new thing. He was now calling out. You think that this calling out of Babylon has been going on, you know, just now? Come out of her, my children? No. Started with Messiah ben Joseph. Yeshua started the whole process now finally of calling out, okay? And especially, now none of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had, they would not crucify the Lord of glory. So I'm telling you what, God has cards that he's going to play that he holds very close. I mean, let me tell you, you, you are not going to figure out the strategies of God unless you're a true prophet and he tells you, okay? So, 
they went across, rather as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no heart has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. Okay, so in other words, these are mysteries and no eye has seen, ear has heard, they're not at the surface level. So it's not like you're just going to see them at first glance. Okay, but God has revealed it to us by the Spirit. This is the whole point. The Spirit teaches all things, even the deep things of God. A born again, a spirit filled Ruach HaKodesh believer who is living Torah, will, it, the, this is our inheritance. We have the mind of Christ, the anointing that will lead us into all truth. So we have what it takes. Okay, we have the wiring, we have the program. Look at that, I mean, I don't mean to be, the Ruach HaKodesh is the program that you can click on that's going to access for you this, um, this hidden knowledge and wisdom that God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. There's no place the Holy Spirit, you know, and this way he talks about his different chambers. He's got, he's got treasure places where he has wisdom and knowledge and things, okay? He knows where everything is, you know? God has a very orderly uh, filing system. Um, we have not received the spirit of the world, that's, but the Spirit who is from God, the Ruach HaKodesh, that we may understand what God has freely given us. And this is what we speak. This is, and it is not in words taught by human wisdom. It is not in words taught, but it is in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual worlds. Okay? Now, the, the natural man does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God. It's like a different language. He can't hear it. He doesn't have the, the translation. He doesn't have... Um, the program that can translate those words to his mind, okay? It's really, in a way, it's a pure physics thing. For they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man judges all things, but he is not himself subject to any man's judgment. In other words, I'm supposed to judge all things. This is read, test everything. I have the Spirit of God. I have a built-in discernment program. I can test everything, okay? And, and, and bring it to the Lord and, and find truth, okay? For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? It's not like, okay, it's not like I can tell God what it means. No way. He's going to have to reveal it to me through the Ruach, okay? But we have the mind of Christ. Brothers, I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, as infants in Christ. This is the whole point. This is esoteric understanding that is very deep, that you just, you have to grow up, you have to know your Torah. There is a certain level. God expects you to be at a certain level of skill, um, a workman who needs not to be, uh, you know, as a level of skill, okay? I gave you milk, not solid food. Again, the meat eaters were talking about this. For you are not ready for solid food. In fact, you still are not, okay? This is the point. For as long as there is jealousy and dissension among you, aren't you worldly? He says, for, for since there is jealousy and dissension among you, um, are you not walking in the way of man? You know, I follow Apollos. Or are you, are you mere man? What is then is Apollos? What is Paul? They are servants through whom you believe as the Lord has assigned to each his role. You know, Apollos planted uh, the seed, God, but God watered, he made it grow. God is the one who makes you increase in knowledge. You know, and I'm just, just throw this out there to people. You know, I'm a Rob Skiba. I'm going to, I'm going to unsubscribe to Skywatch. I mean, so if you're tracking with me, that is like the whole point, people. God has placed knowledge in a lot of different repositories. You have to just have no fear and just keep plowing the field. A lot of people have, a, all right, so this is my point. We cannot get into, let the flat earth become a line in the sand. This is what I'm trying to say. Oh my gosh. This is the, this is the plan of the enemy. And if you put that Lismas test on it right now, before most of the and also, to have you people don't even believe in Kabbalah, don't even understand Jewish Christ, never cracked the book once, still believe it's of the devil, woohoo, okay? How are you going to get to the deep, and how are you not going to be fall right into Satan's deception and trap? Because I believe it, it, it has the potential of a huge psyop, okay? Not that I'm, okay? So, for we are God's workers, we are God's field, we are God's build, okay? Now, let me go to this... Um, let me see if I said, okay? Because this is, I have to read a quote, because this really threw me for a leap, because I was listening to something, and, 
I mean, I tell, as I said this before, in the, I, I, I am not going to add to the science. That's not my thing. I am looking at this thing strictly theologically, um, philosophically, um, and, and, and so, okay. But I was thrown a little bit of a curve because, let me give you this quote just to get you to where I am. Because this is my fear, and this is what I think is, 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 is a little bit of a, a problem. So I was asking somebody, I know the plan, the word planets is not in the Bible. It's, it's, we're talking about wandering stars. There's something else going on here. Okay. No biblical, and so I'm going to give you a quote. I asked somebody, how come you cannot have, this is the heart of the argument if you're following me, why can't David Flynn have a piece of the puzzle and the flat earthers? Why do we have to throw one baby out with the bat? You know, why can't the two of them be, be tracking until it comes together. Why do you have to draw that line in the sand? Okay, so the, same, the word plan is not in the Bible. It is a mistranslation, whether intentional or not. You have words like stars, host of heaven, wandering stars, stones of fire, but no planets. I got that. All of these were placed in the firmament and not saw outside it in space. Therefore, planetary civilizations and or cities structures don't fit into the biblical F.E. cosmology. Flat Earth. Come. I'm like, uh, uh, how do you know? Uh, who, who, you know, who died and made you? Uh, how do you know? <laughs> we don't, I don't think we have enough information. Now, this is my point. Because I think there's still some pieces of the puzzle that are not being put into, on the table yet, okay? Now, I want to give you this a quote from Clement, okay? Because words are very precise, and a lot of these words we have not fully unpacked yet to all their different levels of scriptural use. I follow what is called PARDES, P-A-R-D-E-S, which is a level of a, a, a tried-and-true Hebraic level of exegesis or of scriptural interpretation, and I'm going to get to that, okay? But this is a quote. It says, Chapter 20, five, six, 28, account of the creation. And so he divided, Yah, and so Yahweh Elohim divided into two portions that fabric of the universe. That's a good word, actually, fabric of the universe. Although it was but one house, the reason of the division was this, that the upper portion might afford a dwelling place to Balakim, which is to, to angels, Okay, and the lower realm to men. Okay, now what we have here is a, is a reference into lower waters and upper waters. There is, the, there is a reference here to house. It's really one house that God built, okay, and, but it's divided. See, because there's a lot of this language. Paul uses this house, you know, the, the house analogy. I've been talking about this. It's, it's divided into two. I've told you that the, the um, is it mem or ayan is the line and it has a, a yad above and a yad below and it's the waters above and the waters below. This thing is divided. God did divide it, but that was his division. Okay, so that there would be a realm, there would be places for the angels and places for the men. Okay, now, and this is something to me that we have to begin to really flesh out a little more. The material universe, which is the object of scientific study, okay, represents only about one, represents literally one quarter of the creation. The unlimited spiritual worlds make up the greater three-fourths. Like a cloud in the spiritual sky, the material, well, I'm not even going to go to that, okay? So let me go back to now this whole thing. There is this concept in the scriptures that and this is what we have to do, because I'm not convinced, you're never going to convince me that there is no place for planetary civilizations and or city structures in the, because you might be just, I don't think you can say that yet when we really understand a lot of this stuff. Paul really